guys, um, Captain Alex Mason here, and I'm going to do something that I don't think anybody has actually done, which I'm a little bit disappointed, and that's why I'm actually doing it. Um, I'm going to try my best to read the intel, as be like, again, as best as I can, because the graphics really are hard to see. Alright, date, October 5th, 1960, Kedbix, uh, to Richard Kane, A.D. D.C. slash S.A.D. from Ryan Jackson, Chief Analyst. Subject: Excessive and suspicious Eastern Bloc commercial freighter traffic in Cuban forts of call. Following last year's communist um, overthrow of the Eastern government. Is that what it says? Fatil I don't know. Ballista's government, the Ballista government in Cuba, the newfound relationship between the Soviet Union and the Republic of Cuba has become increasingly suspect. Beca has become increasingly suspect and continues to evolve into a likely threat to U.S. national security assets on the ground report unconventional and suspected military components are being imported into Cuba on Eastern Bloc commercial freighter. We have only one ground level photo as security around the ports is extremely tight. Tab A. In addition, we have captured two shots from U-2 recon flights both of which are inconclusive. The report indicates large, um, large modular, I don't know that word, um, industrial components roughly the size of small houses are being assembled in two ports on the Cuban south coast, Santa Cruz del Sur and San de Dero de Fastlatan, I don't know. Um, there are three are the only confirmed location. These are the only confirmed locations. Sorry, um, ground teams are working to identify more. Of particular interest is the fact that after assembly, these components are located back out onto commercial ships leaving Cuba. Final destination is unknown. The preparations are being made to insert agency assets onto these sub onto these ships. Um, request for corona support is pending. We have yet to we have yet assert I don't know. The purpose of all oh, the the right to obtain the purpose of these components, but whatever plans the Soviets and Cubans are formulating, it is being hidden extraordinarily well. I have attached in tab C, Maltine mal traffic, uh, maps from the last 95 hours. Alright, so we got a picture of uh, Fidel Castro at this point, Prime Minister and Nikita Dragovich. Operation 40. Date, August 12, 1959. Um, to Colonel J.C. King, Chief... I don't know. From Ryan Jackson, Chief Analyst. Subject of... I have no idea what it is. Of Frog Act? Or of Covert Action against the Castro regime. Objective. The purpose of the recommendations outlined here in here and is to bring out bring about the replacement of Cast the Castro regime with a regime more devoted to the true um, interests of the Cuban people and more acceptable to the US in such a matter as to avoid the appearance of U.S. intervention.
Um, one, I am today transmitting to the National Security Council a proposal in which it is concluded that the exi exists a far-left dictatorship in the Republic of Cuba, which, if allowed to remain in power, will will full, fully encourage similar revolutionary actions against the U.S. Uh, holdings and interests in other Latin American countries. Um, the back two. The background for this assessment is presented in detail in tab R. Um, operational recommendation number three is to recruit and a minimum of 40 agents. Operation 40, <laughs> tab C. Um, to be led by operative and Cuban exile Felix Rodriguez to plan and execute the removal of Castro and reinsert a U.S. recognized Cuban government in exile as the controlling regime of said nation. Operation 40 should remain classified top secret and report solely to these the highest level of the agency and the White House. Four, um, recommended recruitment of private supporters and I don't know testament to gain the necessary funds for proposed operations. Funding breakdown for Operation 40 can be found in tab D with a list of proposed agency, friendly businesses um, to aid in recruiting, planning, and other operational um, logics or something. Okay, I don't know what that helicopter really is, but it looks like a Black Hawk, and they didn't really have Black Hawks until like the 80s, I believe. Alright, top secret, we got a picture of Alex Mason in Operation 40, because at this point he was with Operation 40. Um, date, September 6, 1960, to Richard M. Nixon, um, Admiral, Elizabeth, I don't know, um, from Ryan Jax Jackson, Chief Analyst, Operation, Subject, Operation 40 Candidate, number 24, Mason Alex, Place of Birth, um, Anchorage, Alaska, USA, it says Fairbanks, a nationality, American, Caucasian, uh, date of birth. Is that... I know it's 1933. I think it says 6... 3... Yeah, 6, 3, 1930. Um, age right now is 27. Height, 5'11". Um, build average. Weight, 190 pounds. Um, eyes... He has green eyes? Um, hair, brown. I always thought he had blue. Huh. Summary profile. Born and raised in Alaska, the geographical proximity of his um, home state to communist Russian drought brought the threat of the Cold War that much closer to his doorstep than most Americans. This is a key contributor to the candidate's... Um, uh, further anti-communist uh, ideals and eventually lead to his enlistment in the U.S. Marine Corps. The candidate spent his youth hunting elk and grizzlies in the Alaskan wilderness with his father, a World War II vet, and recipient, I don't know how to pronounce that word, but I know he gets something, of the Purple Heart for his actions at the Macon At Atoll. Um, as such, the candidate is adept. The candidate is adept in cold weather um, contact te combat techniques, and is an excellent sniper. At the age of 20, he became the youngest. Um, I think it's Winchester Cup. I read it before. Um, winner in the victory of the marksmanship competition. Candidate was recruited to SAD. SAD or N SOG at the age of 25 after an exemplary 
term of service within the uh, Marines, ha having, having served with um, distinction since joining the agency, Mason has a long standing friendship with many of his fellow agency colleagues and shows a particular particular um, intimacy, I don't know, with operative Frank Woods. Um, always itching for action, Mason's tendency towards towards um, in, in I don't know. I think it looks like endurance is the uh, one trait that may not have been completely trained out of him. For however, close friend Woods is well aware of this and knows exactly when and how to rein in with him. Full full service record and psychological analysis enclosed. Um, yeah, so you guys want to know why, um, I don't know if I mentioned it in my other videos, but Mason actually, um, fought in the Korean War with, um, Woods, and, um, Hudson, he was in the Korean War, but he didn't really meet these guys. Uh, he was with the 101st Airborne Division. These guys were just with the Marines, and they were fighting in Korea. Uh, however, his service record, I think it's a little different. I know, uh, Woods actually served when the war actually started. At least, I think. Um, but yeah. Um, if you guys think you want me to do more of this, I, I can try. Again, these graphics, and it's hard for pretty much everybody. Um, uh, it's hard to read. And, um, yes, I did collect every Intel piece except for this one. Um, I'm probably going to do a separate video once I get the chance to. Uh, uh, show you guys where that piece of Intel is for the Wii version. I actually found out, and I'm pretty upset that I missed this one. I mean, come on, really? Um, oh, and those um, two characters um, that I told, those several characters that I didn't tell you guys yet. Alright, so you know at the end of Mission 7, the numbers, uh, the two guys in the front were Shabs and Taylor, and then that guy who was like waving his hands was Sergeant Mastis or something, and Sergeant Mastis, he shows up in the last mission of the campaign. Now, it usually depends, he can live or he can die. Um, also, another character, he was new, he dies anyway, Sergeant Aziz, and he opened the door at that particular mission, even though it doesn't say his name, but he dies. Trust me. Um, yeah, now that I've come told you guys who those characters are, um, hopefully um, I will get the chance. I um, might do one more video today, but I don't know if I want to do it on Call of Duty. For a while. I just want to take a break from it. It's kind of getting old for me. I want to at least wait till Call of Duty Ghosts come out comes out. So, yeah. Um, I'll see you guys uh, next time on whatever I do. Um, I mean, I have plenty of games. I just don't know which ones to play right now. Kind of getting bored, but anyway. See you guys later.